So in this session, I get to derive the equations for mass and density of an ideal gas using the ideal gas equation. Of course, here we'll be just playing around with the ideal gas equation, manipulating it to get the parameters we want. The ideal gas equation, PV is equal to nRT, where this is pressure, that is volume, that is the number of moles, and this is the molar gas constant, and that's the absolute temperature. Now, what do we want here? Uh, we want to use this to get the mass of a gas, an expression for the mass of a gas. Definitely, we know that N is given by the mass ms, we've denoted it this time as m subscript s. This is the mass of the substance divided that by the relative molecular mass of that gas. So we've substituted for the value of n right there and this becomes PV is going to be equal to n. Our value of n is ms over am like that times r times t. And so when we make ms the subject of the formula, we end up with PVm over rt. This is the expression for mass of a gas. You Just like we've been doing before, we are using the same equation, the ideal equation, but we are manipulating it to just make what we want the subject of the formula so that we're able to get what we don't have. So this is exactly, it's the same gimmicks we are going to use when we are dealing with the density of an ideal gas. If we want to find the density of an ideal gas, we are still going to begin from this, but we are going to manipulate it in such a way that we make sure that we are having the density as the subject of the formula for us to be able to get what we want. So this is what I'm talking about. PV is equal to nRT, of course. PV is equal to ms, the mass of the gas, over the relative molecular mass of the gas times R times T. Now, we are looking for the expression for density, and that the expression for density is just within this, because this is the mass of the gas. So, but we know that uh, density is equal to mass over volume, and so if we make ms the subject of the formula, which we're putting here, we know that ms is going to be equal to the density, which we shall denote like that, density times volume. So it means that when we make ms the subject of the formula and we put the rest of that here like we had done in previously, we go ahead and break this mass down. Of course, mass is density times volume, and that is what we have done here, density times volume. And we make the density the subject of the formula, and we end up having our expression for density of one mole of an ideal gas, and that is given as that. Now, um, do that density is equal to PM over RT. Of course, for it, for it to come to PM over RT, this V disappeared with that V and remained with PM over RT. Now, take note also that N, the number of moles, is given as the mass of a substance divided that by capital M. But sometimes the number of moles can be expressed in terms of the Avogadro's number. And uh, we can find the value of n over the number of moles as capital N, which is the number of moles, I mean, the number of particles or the number of molecules, which so happy we shall call just N, over N subscript A, which is Avogadro's constant. And that can also work here, depending on what you've been given. This is what I'm talking about, that capital N over N A. N being the number of molecules divided by that by Na over that is Avogadro's constant. N right here, these are the number of moles. So for the value of N can be the mass of the substance divided that by the relative molecular mass, or it can be the number of mo molecules. The number of molecules is the same as the number of the mass of the substance divided that by Avogadro's constant of so in this question, they're asking us to calculate the number of atoms of an ideal gas of this volume, of that pressure, and of this temperature. We have the molar gas constant and the Avogadro's number. They're asking us to calculate the number of atoms. So now, if you know, we know that PV is equal to nRT, and we know that the number of atoms comes from this now, like from our earlier derivations, we know that the value of N, N can be given as uh, the number of atoms that they are talking about divide that by Avogadro's constant. So if we substitute this right there, we are interested in getting that value of N. So getting that value of N, we know that PV is going to be equal to N over Avogadro's number times R times T. Making N the subject of the formula means that we have a value of N right there as PV times NA divide that by RT. 
So we, get, we calculate and get the value of n, the number of atoms that they're the ones they want in the question. So we go ahead and substitute. The, va the value of n is going to be equal to our pressure. Our pressure in this case is 1.1 times 10 to the power 5 times our volume. Our volume is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the power negative uh, 2 times Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant in this case is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Divide all this by R times TR, universal gas constant, 8.31. Multiply that by the um, absolute temperature. Uh, the temperature in this case, the question says it's 20 degrees Celsius. It's 20 degrees Celsius. Convert that to Kelvin. We add that plus 273 to convert it to Kelvin and we definitely have our number of particles as or 1.49 times 10 to the power 24 atoms. Now an another way of doing this number is uh, you see this PV is equal to nRT you can simply come and say PV is equal to nRT and then you first find the value of n. This means that uh, you're going to put the, the, uh, the, the amount of pressure right there. The pressure is 1.1. So you come and say 1.1 times 10 to the power 5. Multiply that by the volume. Of course, the volume is given as 5.5 .5 times 10 to the power negative 2. is going to be giving us the value of N times R. Our value of R is 8.31 times our absolute temperature which so happens to be 20 degrees Celsius, so you call it 20 plus 273 Kelvin. So you get your value of N. After getting your value of N and um, you get around 2.4835 moles, then you will go and say that one mole of an ideal gas has got 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. Therefore, n, the n you got, which in this case is 2.4835 moles, is going to be equivalent to x atoms. Then you cross multiply and you get your value of x and you should be able to get this very answer. Now in this one they are asking us to find the molecular mass of hydrogen gas of density that at STP. We are still playing around with PV is equal to nRT. They want us to find the molecular mass of hydrogen gas. Now where do we find the molecular mass? We know that the molecular mass is coming from that value of n and we derived these expressions. Now in this question we are having hydrogen gas. We're having density. They've only given us the density and then the standard temperature and pressure. So we can use the expression that is having density for us to make be able to find the molecular mass. This is how we do it. So they want us to get the molecular mass. This is exactly what they want us to get. M. So it's just making M the subject of the formula. The, the question has given us the density. So this is the density. We have the density. Uh, it is at standard temperature and pressure. So we have the pressure giving this pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury because that's the standard pressure or 1.0 times 10 to the power 5 uh, newtons per meter squared. Then uh, we have the value of R, which has been given to us in the question, and then the absolute temperature, which is 273 Kelvin, because that is STP. So we go ahead and find the value of M, which so happens to be the molecular mass of hydrogen gas. So from um, density is going to be equal to PM over RT. We go ahead and... Uh, Make M the subject of the formula, they want the molecular mass. Now definitely here we are finding, we are getting the molecular mass. It so happens to be density RT over P. Now the density is 0 0.09. Multiply that by R which is 8.314. Multiply that by the absolute temperature, in this case being 273. Divide that by our pressure.
This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.